Hallelujah. Calvary. Luke chapter 23, verse 33 says, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand, and the other on the left. It says there. They crucified him. Crucifixion was a form of capital punishment. Just like lethal injection. The gas chamber. And the firing squad are today, but only worse in the pain it inflicted. Listen to how crucifixion is explained. It was most often performed to dissuade the witnesses from perpetrating similar, usually particularly very heinous crimes. Victims were sometimes left on display after death as a warning to any other potential criminals. Crucifixion was usually intended to provide a death that was particularly slow, painful, gruesome, humiliating, and public using whatever means were most expedient for that goal. And as we examine the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today, here is how a physician, a, a medical doctor, describes what happened to Jesus' body on the cross. Let me warn you, brothers and sisters, it's very graphic. The legionnaire feels for the depression at the front of the wrist. He drives a heavy square wrought iron nail through the wrist and deep into the wood. Quickly he moves to the other side and repeats the action being careful not to pull the arms too tightly but to allow some flexibility and movement. The left foot is then pressed backward against the right foot and with both feet extended, toes down, a nail is driven through the arc of each, leaving the knees moderately flexed. The victim is now crucified. As he slowly sags down with more weight on the nails in the wrist, excruciating pain shoots along the fingers and up the arms to explode in the brain because the nails in the wrist are putting pressure on the median nerve. As he pushes himself upward to avoid this stretching torment, he places his full weight on the nail through his feet. Again, there is the, the searing agony of the nail tearing through the nerves between the metatarsal bones of the feet. At this point, as the arms fatigue, Great waves of cramps uh, sweeping over the muscles, uh, knotting them in deep, uh, relentless, throbbing pain. With these cramps comes the inability uh, to push himself upward, uh, hanging by his arms. Uh, the pectoral muscles uh, are paralyzed uh, and the intercoastal muscles uh, are unable to act. 
air can be drawn into the lungs but cannot be exhaled. Jesus fights to raise himself in order to get even one short breath. Uh, finally, carbon dioxide builds up in the lungs and in uh, the bloodstream and the cramps uh, partially subside. Spasmodically, uh, he is able to push himself uh, to upward to exhale uh, and bring in the life-giving oxygen. Jesus experienced uh, several hours of limitless pain, uh, cycles of twisting, uh, joint rendering cramps, uh, intermittent uh, partial asphyxiation, uh, searing pain uh, where tissue is torn uh, from his lacerated back uh, as he moves up and down uh, against the rough timber. Then another agony begins, uh, a terrible crushing pain uh, deep in the chest uh, as, as the pericardium uh, slowly fills uh, with serum uh, and begins to compress uh, the heart. Uh, it is now almost over. The loss of tissue fluids uh, has reached a critical level, uh, the compressed heart uh, is struggling to pump blood uh, into the tissue. Uh, the tortured lungs uh, are making a frantic effort uh, to gasp in small uh, gulps of air. Uh, the markedly dehydrated uh, tissues uh, send their flood of stimuli uh, to the brain. Uh, the body of Jesus uh, is now in extreme and he can feel the chill of death uh, creeping through his tissues. And most people believe that it was this excruciating physical pain alone that killed him. But Jesus, brothers and sisters, on the cross experienced an even greater pain uh, uh, than all the physical pain he felt uh, could ever produce. Uh, it was the mental and emotional pain uh, which was far worse that killed him. Understand, brothers and sisters, Jesus never cried out on the cross because of the physical pain he felt. But he did cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, because he was saddened by the fact that after everything he was doing to save man, yet many would still be lost. He also cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because as he was bearing the sins of the world upon himself, the father who was right there with him, yet he had to veil himself from his son. You see, it was the feeling of separation from his father because he was bearing the weight of the sins of the world upon his shoulders. It was the fact that in spite of all of his self-sacrificing love, which he showed by taking the plight of man upon himself, but knowing that so many would still reject him is what broke his heart and killed him. What I need you to understand today, brothers and sisters, is yes, is that yes, the Romans carried out the execution of Jesus Christ, but we are all responsible for his death. Because even though he died by crucifixion, yet he did not die the death of a criminal, but he died the death of a redeemer because he died the death that we deserved. He died for your sins and for mine. And so, yes, the Romans executed him. And yes, we are all responsible for his death because we are all sinners in need of a savior. But I need you to understand the very next statement I'm about to make. But it was church folk that orchestrated the execution of Jesus. 
not because the church folk believed that his death would bring forth salvation, but because they had rejected him because they did not know him. That's what the word says. It was some of the Jewish church leaders who set up the whole thing and brought false charges against him. And watch this now, brothers and sisters. They hurried up and made sure that Jesus was crucified early enough on Friday so that they had time to go home and get ready for Sabbath. It was Sabbath keeping tithe-paying health reformers who orchestrated the execution of our Lord and Savior all because they did not know who he was, all because they did not know him. They did not have a relationship with him. And let that be a lesson to us today because there is no salvation outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you can keep the Sabbath, eat healthy, and do all the other things that you have been taught and instructed to do. Which, by the way, hear me now, they are all real good things to do and the things that each of us should do. But yet, outside of Jesus, it does not mean a thing. Because you can do all those things and yet still crucify Jesus daily by your actions, by how you treat your neighbor, by the words that come out of your mouth, by, your st by how you stand up for the powerless and the voiceless, by how you act in your relationships, by how you conduct yourself when no one else is looking. Brothers and sisters, the point is this. And get ready, praise him. The, the point is this. When you look at the seriousness of what Jesus went through for all of us at Calvary, it was the ultimate sign of his commitment to us. Should not we then be more serious in our walk, our relationship? Our commitment to him.